Hello everyone, it is good to be with you today. Today we are going to continue with our journey through the Old Testament with the story about Solomon, the wise king of Israel. But first, please join me in worshipping the Lord and sing the songs with me.
Last week, our memory verse was 2 Samuel 6 verse 14. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, wearing a priestly garment. Today, our memory verse is James 1 verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who will give it to you. Please say it with me. James 1 verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who will give it to you. Let's sing one more song. smartest person you know? Someone in your family, in school, on TV, in this church? Who is the wisest person you know? How about in the Bible? Here it is. King Solomon asked God for wisdom and he was supposed to be the wisest ruler. And then there were also the three wise men who followed the star to Bethlehem to see baby Jesus. There's a big difference between being smart and being wise. Smart is someone who knows a lot of facts and information. Wise is someone who makes good decisions or choices. Today our story continues after the death of King David. King David knew that his son Solomon would be Israel's next king. Before he died, David instructed Solomon what he should do as he reigned as king. He taught Solomon to love the Lord and to do what the Lord tells him to do. Our story today starts when Solomon first became king. We read about this in 1 Kings 3 verse 3 to 28. Please watch this video with me to see what happened. King David was growing old and he stayed in his own room lying in bed wrapped in blankets because he felt so cold. Meanwhile, people were talking and planning about who was going to be the next king. 
Adonijah was the king's oldest living son, and lots of people heard he would be the next king. So Adonijah made up his mind and crowned himself king. We'll have a dinner party, he announced to his followers, and invite everyone to come. Afterward, you will declare me king. He did not invite Solomon or his friends. Solomon's friend Nathan heard about the plan and hurried to see Solomon's mother Bathsheba. Go straight to King David, he advised her. Tell him what is happening and remind David of his promise to you that Solomon should become king after him. When Bathsheba was ushered into the king's presence, she bowed low. As she finished telling him about Adonijah's plan, Nathan arrived with the same story. David promised Bathsheba that he would keep his promise and make Solomon king. Put Solomon on my own royal mule, he ordered Nathan, and lead him through the city. Let Zadok the priest anoint him king. Then blow the trumpet and bring Solomon back in victory. Nathan was quick to obey the king's orders. Adonijah and his friends were still at the dinner party when they heard the trumpet blast and the cheers of the crowds as the new king rode through the city. They knew their plan had failed. Solomon was king at David's own command. Before David died, he gave Solomon a lot of good advice. He reminded him that above all, he must obey God's laws. Once David was dead, Solomon had all the work and worry of ruling the people of Israel by himself. One night, King Solomon had a dream. God appeared to him and said, What would you like me to give you, Solomon? Solomon knew at once what he wanted most. Please, God, he prayed, give me wisdom. I am young and have no experience. I don't know how to rule over all the people of Israel unless you help me. Make me wise so I can rule over my people justly. Help me to understand the difference between good and evil. God was pleased with Solomon's answer. You could have asked to be rich or to live long or to have your enemies put to death, God told him. Instead, you have asked for wisdom. I will give you wisdom to rule and judge fairly. You will be the wisest man who ever lived. I am also going to give you the things you did not ask me for. You will be rich and respected by everyone. And if you obey me and keep my laws, you will have a long life. Solomon woke up and knew he'd been dreaming, but he also knew that God had really been talking to him. He felt comforted that God was going to give him the help he needed to be a good king. God answered Solomon's prayer and gave him great wisdom. He composed 3,000 wise sayings and wrote a thousand songs. He knew all about animals and birds, fish and plants and flowers. He became famous far and wide for his wisdom. God also gave Solomon the skill to deal with all sorts of situations at court. Many of his people came asking for justice and requesting the king to hear their problems. One day, two women arrived and were shown into the king's throne room. One of them was carrying a baby. A soldier took the baby and held it while the two women poured out their story to the king. We lived together, the first one began, and we both had babies not long ago. My baby was born just two days before hers. One night, she rolled over on her baby by accident and it died. While I was still asleep, she took my baby from beside me and put her dead baby in its place. I woke up to find the baby beside me was dead. When I looked again, I saw that it wasn't my baby at all, but hers. The other woman interrupted angrily. The dead baby was yours, she argued. Mine is the living baby. Yours died. The king let them shout and argue for a moment. Then he asked, Are you both claiming that this live baby is yours? Yes, they shouted together. Fetch a sword, the king ordered. A sword was carried in, and Solomon said to one of the soldiers, Since both these mothers say the baby is theirs, cut the baby exactly in half and give them half each. At once, 
The baby's real mother cried out, Don't kill him. I'd rather she have him than for him to be divided. But the other woman said, Go on, do as the king said. It's fair. Stop, Solomon shouted. Don't hurt the baby. I wanted to discover the true mother. The baby belongs to the one who wants to save his life. Give the baby to her. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about the situation of the baby and the two mothers. They thought how wise and clever their king must be if he could think of such a scheme to find out the truth. What can we learn from today's Bible story? While none of us may ever achieve the fame of King Solomon, we can all tap into the same source of wisdom Solomon used. God gave us his word, the Bible, so we could learn what his plans are for our lives. By learning what God has to say, we can make better choices. We do the right thing when everyone else makes the wrong choice. We treat others fairly. We choose honesty over dishonesty. Something else happens when we see God's wisdom. We become known as wise people. People know they can trust us. They trust our judgment and will ask for our advice. They will see the fair and loving way we treat others. Most important, they will see Jesus in our lives. God wants us to ask for wisdom. He wants us to choose wisdom and make good choices with our lives. God wants us to show other people that He is the source of all wisdom. It all starts with asking God to give us that gift that He gave to Solomon. Let us pray. Dear Father, please make us wise. Thank you for giving us the Bible. Help us to study the Bible and to seek wisdom in the Bible. Help us to make the right choices. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are closing this lesson with one last song. Please sing with me. You now have time to do the activities that goes with this lesson. May God bless you. See you next week.